really boring, but practical and hopefully useful tips for messing around with the UI in DaVinci Resolve. Particularly useful if you're editing on an itty bitty laptop just like this one. Now before we get into it, don't forget that a bunch of the changes we're going to make can be saved as presets. Up in Workspace, come down to Layout Presets, you can save the current layout as a preset. So as you change things, as you rearrange the UI to your liking, you can come in and save it. Then if you want to apply it, you just go to the one you've created and you load it. You can also update them, export them and delete them. And you can have as many of these as you like. Right, let's kick things off with the first one, full screen window. I think this one is most useful for Windows users. I think if you're on Mac, you can kind of do this anyway. But if you're on Windows and you can see your Windows bar at the bottom down here, all you want to do is within DaVinci Resolve, click on Workspace. Right in the middle, there is full screen window. Give that a click and it just gives you that extra space. It gives you a proper full screen so you haven't got the little bar at the bottom, which just means DaVinci Resolve has a little bit more room. Next up, labels. This is hidden. You might like it, you might not, and it only makes a small difference, but it's worth mentioning. So on the edit page or any page within Resolve, you'll probably have some sort of labels and icons across the top here. And then you've also got your navigation icons down the bottom. If we right click on any of these down the bottom, we do get this little menu and we can change from show icons and labels to show icons only. And that just tucks that away, makes it a little bit smaller. Again, just giving you a little bit more room to work with. Now you can do the same thing with these icons at the top. Now for this one, you don't get much more kind of vertical space, you don't get any, but it does make it a little bit neater. Now one other good place to do this, if you open up the inspector by clicking on your inspector icon top right hand corner, you've got the same icons here, video, audio effects, transitions, etc. Right click there, you can also change that to be show labels or show icons only. And again, it just makes that a little bit smaller, giving you a little bit more room within the inspector. I'm talking itty bitty differences, but they can all start to add up. Now, if you want to take this slightly further, you can actually get rid of all of the different pages across the bottom and navigate via shortcuts instead. To do this, click on workspace at the very top, third option down, show page navigation. If you tick that to get rid of it, you'll get rid of this bar across the bottom entirely. Now, you obviously still need to navigate between the pages. You can do that by going to workspace, then go to switch to page and you can see we've got media, cut, edit, fusion, color, fair light and deliver. And we have some keyboard shortcuts. Shift two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. If you're wondering where shift one is, shift one will actually open up your project manager. So then you can switch between projects. Now I don't particularly like shift one, two, three, four because it kind of takes two hands or a big stretch. So instead, if you click on DaVinci Resolve, very top left hand corner, then come to keyboard customization, over here on the right hand side, there is a search box. If you search for switch to, you will see workspace, switch to page. You'll see the same shortcuts in here and you can assign some different ones. Or another option, go back to that keyboard customization. There is an option for show page navigation. So I'm gonna try something like control and F1 and then save. And now if I want that back, I can do. I can jump to my next page and then hide it again. The choice is yours. Next up, I think this one again is most useful for you Windows users out there, and this is UI scaling. You can actually properly change the UI scale of DaVinci Resolve directly within DaVinci Resolve. So you don't need to change the UI scaling of Windows itself, you can just do Resolve. For this one, all you need to do, click on DaVinci Resolve top left hand corner, then go to Preferences. From here, jump over to User at the very top, UI Settings, and there is a UI display scale. Auto will just be the same as your normal working environment, or you can go 100%, 150%, or 200%. Now, a quick note, it will depend on what the scale of your Windows is. So mine is currently set to 200 because I like this nice and big for when I'm doing these videos. So setting it to 100 or 150 will actually make it smaller, meaning I can see more. So it will just depend on how your system is scaled. But I do recommend don't just jump in at 200 in case it does make things bigger and then it can be really hard to get back to these options. Next up, expand, or more importantly, shrink. So as you can see here, we've got a full screen inspector on the right and then we've got my media pool and my effects library on the left. Now that's nice for accessing those things, 
but it does give you a pretty small timeline. Over in the top right hand corner, there is this icon, shrink or expand. And if you do that, you can keep your inspector open, but it just kind of tucks it up to the top half. So then you get your timeline down here. Now you also have one over on the left, but what's important to note is if you do shrink that, you can then only have one thing open at a time. So it's either the media pool or the effects library rather than both. But it does now give you a full width timeline, which is super useful. And sticking with the timeline track height. This is a good one. Again, if you're working on a particular timeline, you've got loads of different tracks and you wanna shrink it all so you can kind of see what's going on just that little bit better. It's really quick and easy. Just above your timeline, this icon here, top left, timeline view options. Give that a click. Down at the bottom, track height, and you can simply slide these to make the video tracks bigger or smaller. And don't forget, you can grab this little bar on the left-hand side, click and drag to kind of move your timeline up and down. So if I want more room for audio tracks, I can move it that way, or more room for video tracks, I can move it this way. Dual viewer mode. Now this one might not affect you. It will depend on the scaling and the resolution and the size and the ratio and whatever of the display on your laptop, but it's absolutely worth talking about because if you're not using it, you might as well get rid of it. And what I'm talking about is this. I've got two preview screens. The one on the right is my timeline and the one on my left is my source media. Again, useful, good way to work, but you might not need it, in which case you can get rid of it. So in the top right hand corner, there's this small little icon here, single viewer mode, give that a click and it will get rid of that second viewer. So now you've just got the one. Now, if you don't see that icon, cause it can hide away, which is quite annoying, just get rid of your inspector by clicking on this icon to minimize your inspector, and then that icon will appear, switch to the single viewer mode, and then you can re-enable your inspector, and you should be good to go. Vertical viewer. Super quick one for you lot that work with vertical timelines often. So I've got my main vertical setup here. This icon down here is expand view, and this will expand your portrait viewer to fit the full screen, so you can actually see it a little bit better. You can also drag this over just a little bit, depending on the aspect ratio you are using. Now, if you want to get back, so you've got your full width timeline, the icon moves over here, shrink view. So you give that a click to shrink it back and get to your full screen timeline. Now, depending on the size of your screen, you may or may not be able to open both the inspector and the viewer. If you're on a smaller screen, it won't let you do it. When you open the inspector, it will shrink this down. That is just gonna depend on the size of the screen, the aspect ratio, the scaling, all that stuff that you're using on your laptop. Now, next bonus tip before we get into the next one. This one doesn't actually save you space, but it's just worth talking about because it can be quite annoying if you didn't know. And the color page is the best example for this. So if you see my menu bar right in the middle, we've got six icons on the left, then a bunch in the middle, and then three over on the right hand side. Now I'm just gonna change my window scaling, which is gonna make DaVinci Resolve think it's working on a different sized screen essentially. Now you'll notice that we have no gap. It just puts all of the icons together across the left, basically because we don't have space for that gap. So DaVinci Resolve has automatically tried to accommodate Rather than squishing the icons and making them all too small, it's just got rid of the gap over on the left-hand side. And I just wanted to mention that on the off chance you're watching a tutorial and they're like, click the icon in the middle by the gap. And on yours, the gap doesn't exist. That's why. Anyway, next up, film strip. So you can see my media pool here and we currently have the thumbnail view. So we can see all of these thumbnails. If we click on this little drop-down box, we can change this to be the list view. Now the list view just gives you all of your media in a list. If you then click on these three little dots in the top right hand corner, there is an option to show film strip. Now if I single click on any piece of my media within the media pool, we get this little film strip here. And this is really useful because if I don't click anything, I've got my timeline view and I can just whip around my timeline or I can come over here and as soon as I hover my mouse, my preview window will change to that source media. I can even then do I's and O's to select particular sections of that clip and then drag them directly from the film strip onto my timeline. If I click on another piece of media, then that will appear within the film strip, grab some more, bring it down, 
and you get the idea. Right, just a couple more, and let's jump back to the media pool for a second. The first one, close your bins, or hide them, at least. This is a simple one, but it's easy to miss. This little icon here in the top left-hand corner, bin list. Give that a click, and you can get rid of this list of bins. It does exactly what it says on the tin. So if you're in a bin or a folder, and you know you're gonna spend a lot of time within this folder, because all of your main media is in there, just give this icon a click to get rid of that, and it just gives you a bit more space within the media pool. Next up, columns. You can pick and choose and rearrange and even create templates for the columns that you see, again, within that media pool, which just means you can make the most of the limited space you have. So with the media pool open, you can see I've got all of my different column headings here. If I click and drag, I can reorder them, so I can put important things over on the left rather than them being miles over on the right. Now, if I want to get rid of some stuff, you simply right click any of the column headings, you get this big long list, and let's say, let's just tick some things. Let's say I want a bunch of stuff on, this is my big heavy duty view. I've got everything enabled. We can click create column layout at the top, and this one's gonna be called heavy. So we've got everything there. And then if I right click, let's untick pretty much everything. The only thing I'm realistically gonna want, FPS just in case, and then probably resolution. Get rid of everything else, and then create another column layout. I'm gonna call this one light, and then okay. And now when I'm working, and I only need those three things, I can make this as small as I need it, and I haven't gotta worry about scrolling left and right. And when I want everything back again, I can right click, go to heavy, and load, and I've got everything I need. Switch back to light, and off we go. Right, another quick bonus one, because I love a bonus one. Again, this doesn't necessarily save space in the UI, but it is very, very useful. And it is delete unused clips. If you've just dumped a bunch of stuff in your media pool, which I tend to do, I might just grab a bunch of the things I think I'll need, and then dump them in some folders, and then realize I don't actually need them after I've sort of cut up my main timeline. What you can do is click on these three little dots, and there's an option, update usage for entire project. Give that a click, and it'll say it's gonna load all the timelines and check basically which clips, which files from the media pool are actually being used within timelines. So I'm gonna click update. Depending on the size of the project, how many clips, whatever else, it may take a moment, or it might be really quick. Mine's been pretty quick. Then I can click the three dots once again, and I can remove unused clips. It's gonna say a very similar thing. I'm gonna load all timelines. And that's just gonna go through the project, go through all of the bins, all of the folders, and delete any clips which aren't actually being used on a timeline, which makes a nice, quick, easy way to tidy up your media pool. Also, highly recommend you do that before you export your project archives, if you wanna do that with all of your media, which I'm not gonna talk about in this video. So let's move on to the next tip, which I forgot what it is. Scopes. <laughs> no, it's not. Kind of. Pop out windows. There's very few of them. There are three that I know of. One of them is incredibly annoying, and you're going to be annoyed when I show you because it exists, but it exists wrong, <laughs> essentially. But the first one, media pool. So rather than dealing with this media pool over here, what you can do is right click on any of the bins or folders. I like to do it on master. There is an option, open as a new window, and it will actually pop that out as a new window. You can move this around, you can put it on other monitors if you're plugged into somewhere else, and then you can simply get rid of this one from the main DaVinci Resolve window, and I like to Alt and Tab, and I can just switch back to this one, and then we've still got our film strip, so let's go to this one, let's click this. We've got my film strip here. I could do an I and an O, and I can still drag down and put it on my timeline, and now it's hidden away again because I don't need it, that's cool, but if I want it back, I Alt and Tab, and now we're back to it. You can actually do this, I believe, for multiple different folders. So you can just get them out as much as you like. Next up is scopes, which is kind of particular, it's kind of niche, is if you're jumping into some color grading, but it is absolutely worth mentioning. This one's super quick and easy. Pretty much from any page within DaVinci Resolve, you click on workspace at the very top, come down to video scopes, and then you can click on, and your scopes will appear. So then you can have these again on another screen or while you're editing on your timeline so you can see all of your parade, your waveform, your vector scopes, and your histograms. 
Now this is the four way version. You can just do this one, which is your single view. And then the single view does allow you to resize this a little bit smaller. So if you wanted to get rid of your media pool and just have your scopes kind of sitting over here somewhere, you can. Audio effects. I nearly forgot about this one, but it is quite useful. So if you've applied any audio effects, either directly to a particular clip on your timeline or to the entire track on your timeline, like I have here, I've got the AI dialog leveler, but this works for the separator, the remixer, the ducker, all those sorts of things, as well as any of the effects that you may have applied from the effects library. Now with any of these selected, let's just go here to the AI dialog leveler. You've got this little icon, custom, give that a click and that will pop out a window. Now let's just get rid of my effects library, get rid of my inspector. I can sort of put this over here. Let's just say I want this over here and then hit play and I can actually see what this is doing. Or if we were to apply something else, let's go with the AI voice isolation. Same again, pop that out. There it is. Put this wherever you want, close the inspector and jobs are good. And last but not least, the pop out preview window. Now I'm only showing you this kind of to show you that it is there even though it's not gonna be that useful and you're probably gonna get annoyed that it exists in the way that it does. But let me show you. So you can't pop out this preview window here and it's something that people have wanted for a long time. But if you jump over to the Fairlight page and then click on this icon here in the top right hand corner for your meters, you get a preview screen. And in this preview screen, there's a little button down here called floating window. And you give that a click, you get a viewer in a floating window, which you can resize and put wherever you like. And then you can scrub through the timeline and it will update. And then if you jump over to the edit page, it disappears and then jump back to the Fairlight page and it's back again. And then you jump back to the edit page and it disappears. Yeah, anyway. That's it for this one. Hope you found it useful. If you did, let me know with your thoughts and feelings down below and all the other YouTube stuff. Like, ah, uh, whatever. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll see you next time. <laughs>